There are two ways to use a DSLR to capture the spectra of stars with a star analyzer. The first way is to use your DSLR with its standard lens. You can piggyback it on your tracking telescope, or you can use it with an inexpensive tracking mount on a tripod. The second way to use a DSLR is to use your telescope as the lens, and we'll look at the second way in just a moment. But first, let's see how to use the DSLR with its own lens. Here's the star analyzer grating mounted on a DSLR lens. A grating used like this is called an objective grating. This is our AD58 thread adapter screwed into the camera's lens cap threads. The adapter's 58 millimeter outer threads go into the Canon camera's lens cap threads, and the inner inch and a quarter threads are for the star analyzer grating. Our site's adapter page shows you how you can use it with other cameras using step-up rings. You might ask, well, which grading should I use as an objective grading on my camera? The Star Analyzer 100 or Star Analyzer 200? Well, that's a pretty straightforward question and the answer is simple too. With a standard 18 to 55 millimeter lens kit that comes with many cameras, use a Star Analyzer 200. For a lens that is 55 millimeters and up to about 200 millimeters, use the Star Analyzer 100. You don't need to plug any numbers into our calculator when you're using an objective grading. Just use these numbers. How long should the spectrum be on my sensor? Well, if you're just getting started, the length of the colorful spectrum should be about 250 to 400 pixels long, like this. You can adjust your camera's zoom lens for that. And by the way, if you're a newcomer to imaging astronomical targets with your DSLR, you should practice first on brighter images without the grading. That way you can develop the necessary imaging skills to find, track, and image stellar objects. You can also use an objective grading to capture spectra on a plain tripod that doesn't track. A typical drift spectrum looks like this. You then use RSpec's rotate and slant commands to level it out. Capturing drift spectra can be a lot more challenging since the stars are moving in your field of view. See the drift spectra PDF on the RSpec calculator page. And be sure to watch the entire Capturing Spectra of Stars video in the same location. Now let's look at how to use your DSLR with your telescope's optics. Here's our ADT2 adapter, which is like a very short extension tube. The adapter screws into your DSLR's T-ring, and then a star analyzer threads into its interior. Which grading should I use with an ADT2 adapter? The Star Analyzer 100 is almost always the right grading for this setup. Refer to the Capturing Spectra of Stars video to see how to use the calculator to confirm the configuration, or send us your camera and telescope specs, and we'll do it for you. One number you need for the calculator is this distance. It's the distance from the grating to the camera sensor. And with the ADT2, that distance is 60 millimeters. And if the calculator calls for a grating to be even closer to the camera sensor, on many cameras, you can mount the grating on the camera side of the adapter, which yields a 53 millimeter distance. Don't get too concerned about getting all these numbers all perfect. They don't have to be exact. So in this video, we've seen there are two ways to use a star analyzer grading on a DSLR. You can use your telescope's optics, or as we saw earlier, you can use the grading as an objective grading on a standalone camera.